We're now joined by senior defensive end uh, Josh Pascal from Kentucky. Um, I'll ask Josh to make an opening statement, then we'll take your questions. Uh, Josh, as you head into the 2021 season, uh, just talk about uh, what you're looking forward to as, as the season approaches. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, getting back to a normal season. Uh, I know last year uh, we were blessed to be able to play a 10-game SEC season, and uh, thanks to the SEC and Commissioner Sankey for allowing that to happen for the ADs from each and every school for protecting their athletes and allowing us to uh, get tested so much weekly and make sure that we're all in a safe uh, bubble of some sort. And um, I'm just thankful to get back to regular season, to get back to full capacity with fans, to get back to a full schedule. And I just want to say uh, thank you guys for allowing me to be here. Thank you, Josh. If you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. We're going to start right down here, Josh, second row here on our left with Bob. Uh, hey, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat is that how you doing? How you doing? Um, you know, Coach Stoops has really brought a lot of stability to the program. He's second in seniority in the league behind Nick Saban. Mm -hmm. What do you think that means to you guys as players? And uh, going to five straight bowl games, uh, being, being part of that, well, at least, you know, four of those, I guess. What, what, what's that been like? Um, it just builds a lot of consistency throughout the program. Um, just knowing that your coach has been there since we've been here. Um, you know, this is my fifth year coming up, and he's been here for each and every year. Um, he's been the main guy in the alpha in the um, facility. And so to keep that, uh, that leadership on that team and to know that you're fighting for the same guy that you've been fighting for for five years, uh, you know, that gives you a lot of confidence. And um, it gives the team confidence knowing that we have a coach that's standing by our side for Kentucky. Okay, we've got a question right over here. Catherine? All right. Hey, Josh, over here to your right, Adam, Kentucky Sports Radio. You've got a lot of seniors on defense, specifically in the secondary. Um, safety position has a lot of them. What are you seeing from some of those guys? And then do you, th do you think you see your defense is maybe um, playing a little bit smaller and getting in some sub packages more than you have in the past because of that depth you all have in the secondary? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, shout out to KSR. But uh, to say uh, we have a lot of leadership opportunities on the defensive side of the ball. Um, something I've seen throughout this all season is the leadership and Yusuf Corker and DeAndre Square, um, Marquand McCall and myself, and just being able to lead this defense from all three different levels, from the linebacker position to the defensive back to the defensive line. And um, we know we're just thankful to have the opportunity. And of course, we have a lot of depth at uh, the safety position, at um, the DP position as well. And uh, I think we'll be able to get into some sub packages, but uh, we'll see more this fall. Josh, we're going to go over here on our left on the near aisle. Hey, Josh. Josh Kendall from The Athletic. I realize the college football playoff expansion is a little too, li too little too late for you guys at your stage of your career, but do you think it's a positive change for college football? Uh, yeah, I'm an old head, so unfortunately I won't be able to experience it, but um, I think it will be a good change uh, just because I think it will bring a lot of competition uh, to, the, to the stage because you're going to have an expansion of that, so it's going to be more teams to get involved in. It won't be like if you're fifth in the country, then you're automatically out of it. So uh, I think it'll bring a lot of competition. Do you think it would have changed the way you and your teammates approached a, a season at Kentucky the last four years, change the outlook on seasons? Um, I wouldn't think it would change the outlook just because I know that uh, we gave it our all each season, um, especially at Kentucky. You know, we've been through a lot, not only in Kentucky football, but in our athletic program. Um, we took a lot of uh, losses in that and our athletic program, and especially with Coach Slarman, um, and, um, and the football program, and of course, uh, with Chris Oates. So um, something that with playing lightly, that's something that we don't do. So I think that uh, I think we're all good with that. And so. finally, some players have raised concerns about the number of games that it could potentially mean. Would you have any concerns about that from a length of season standpoint? Uh, I'm, uh, I mean, of course, it would be a lot of games to get tacked on. Probably was it three? Probably. And, um, you know, that would be a lot of games. But at the same time, you gotta, if you want to be the champion, you have to do it. So I, I don't think that will really raise a concern to the people that's actually, that actually gets into the playoff expansion. Mm -hmm. Thank you, though. All right, Josh, we're going to go over here to the right side on the near aisle. Right. Hey, Josh, Nick Roush, KSR. You all suffered a lot of loss last year. Do you reflect on that a lot, or do you try to put it in the rearview mirror? What kind of approach are you all taking to, to move forward uh, in the 2021 season? Well, shout out to KSR again, but <laughs> um, with 
all of the losses that we did take, especially with uh, Chris Oates and Coach Slarman, that's something that you don't really want to put in a rearview mirror because uh, you want to keep them next to you. Um, those are uh, two great guys and two great competitors. And I know Coach Slarman, um, you know, he had the model for the team. And Coach Slarman was um, always, that was, that's what he stood on. Um, he was going through the most difficult time of his life, but at the same time, he did it all for the team. He showed up to every practice. Um, no matter what he was going through health-wise, he always put the team first. And um, that's something that we really want to keep, ne uh, keep next to us and keep um, on our mind. Okay, I think we've got, we're going to get a microphone. We've got one all the way to the back there on the back right-hand side of the center section. Hey, Josh, John Hill with the Courier Journal. What have you seen from those other defensive linemen who are competing for that third spot on the line? Um, I'm seeing a, uh, a lot of competition, and I feel like that's what's going to bring out uh, the best in all uh, three of those guys. Um, I'm seeing guys putting in extra work, not only what's required, but um, time after that. I'm seeing guys uh, getting film, getting film study, and really take that extra step that um, they needed to take. And, you know, competition can bring out the best in you at times, and I feel like that's what's going on right now. Okay, other questions, raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Oh, we've got one over here on the left. Edgar? Yeah, hey, Josh. Edgar Thompson, the Orlando Sentinel. What, what's, uh, it's early, but what are your thoughts on how name, image, and likeness has been going, and, and how much of a discussion has that been among you guys as a team? Um, I think it's been pretty good so far. Um, I know that we had a discussion as a team, just something brief where we just said we want to make sure that our goal is our goal, that we have our common goal for the year, and that's not with name, image, and likeness. So to make sure that we're all on the same page as putting football first and separating the two. NIL can be your outside business, but when we're in a facility, we're focused on our goals and we're focused on uh, being the best Kentucky football team that we can be. We have another question down here in front left. Tom? Yeah, hey, Tom Murphy, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. What do you guys need to do to compete in the SEC East for the, for the title? Um, uh, to say the least, we just have to uh, execute. Um, we put in the work this offseason, and we're going to continue to uh, during camp. We're going to um, continue to uh, preach our goal, which is to get to Atlanta, and we're going to compete. And that's the thing that we have to do. Uh, we have the players. We have the talent. And now we just have to execute our goals and uh, execute what we have to do. Additional questions. We'll wait for a second. While uh, Coach mentioned the personal adversity you've gone through, how have you been able to help your teammates through some of the adversity of the team based on your personal circumstances? Uh, for me, I just try to uh, just try to be the light because uh, it could be a time or. It could be a moment where a player could be going through something where all they can see is darkness. And you want to be able to shed a light to someone. And that's what I try to do. I try to bring the energy wherever I go. It could be, we could be running sprints and be dead tired, but you're going to see me smiling. You're going to see me having fun. Uh, that's something that uh, I take personally. And um, I just want to be able to be the light to, uh, to guys on the team. Right, we'll go down here to our right in the front row. Curtis Birch, UK Sports Network. Uh, a part of that has been a lot of speaking and going on a lot of TV. And what has been your favorite memory that you've gotten, maybe being able to spread uh, some of that light and some of the cancer awareness that you were wanting to do? Um, I'll probably say um, I spoke at a, uh, a decent amount of uh, services, church services as well. And to be able to share my testimony, I feel like that's my favorite thing to do. And then, of course, um, I got to talk on the Today Show as well. And uh, that's, that, that was a great experience as well. I got to meet uh, J-Lo. And uh, that was a highlight, of course. <laughs> but uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, any other additional questions? All right. You said explain to J-Lo? Yeah. <laughs> OK, I'll set the scene for everybody, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> I was in the um, outside of the dressing room because it's all the famous people and the uh, actual commentators right there. And so J-Lo keeps coming in and out. And so my mom, she keeps fangirling and everything. She wants to, she loves J-Lo and I'm like, all right, it's not that big of a deal. But in my mind, I'm thinking it's J-Lo, it's J-Lo, it's J-Lo. I just keep seeing her. And so she's changing because she, you know, she's performing that day. And so she's changing and she's coming back. And she's walking up the stairs, and I just look up, 
uh, looking at the stairs, and I look up, and she looked, we make complete eye contact, and she winked at me. And I, I hope that week was real, because I've been telling this story ever since it happened. But when I tell you I melted, I melted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, it's hard to top that one, so we'll end there. Appreciate your time. All right, good luck this season. Thank you guys for having me.